Hey friends, busy morning so far today. We started groundbreaking on the second tunnel, as you can see. We started, uh, I peeled back the tarp and I tilled the area where we're gonna put the tunnel. Now this center area, this is not where the tunnel is gonna be, but I also tilled it up. This is where we're gonna have um, our permanent crop, more like asparagus and other stuff, maybe some uh, flowers, that type of deal that we wanna plant in this area. But I went ahead and covered where we're gonna have the tunnel back up, but I, it is tilled up. So I'm gonna leave it covered up for a few more weeks, maybe two, three more weeks. And then uh, I think if we don't have a freeze or a hard freeze, I am going to go ahead, lay out the tunnel and put the uh, rebar in the ground and start building that second tunnel so that we can have it ready for early spring next year. Um, I'll go ahead and probably cover back up the uh, cover the ground back up after we install the tunnel But this way it ensures that we get in a, a good early start to spring next year um, It might even be where we overwinter our garlic this uh, this season. So we'll see we'll see what the boss says Right, gonna be back at it this morning yesterday i started cutting down this maple red maple tree that's when nicole told me it was um which is the next step in uh clearing out the tarp or clearing out the area where the tunnel is gonna be at it was just too close to the tunnel and uh you know we had to get rid of it um just didn't want it to fall or shade out the the tunnel too much so we had to take it down and i'm glad i did because some of the you can see some of the logs that are hollow in the center and uh, that's not gonna be good because they usually break down and fall over whichever direction they're gonna fall. Didn't want it to, to damage the tunnel. But gonna continue today and gonna start cutting some more logs, clearing out the branches or setting a, bun setting a bundle over there or a stack for branches so that I can mulch them later. And we're gonna use that for the walkways inside the tunnel. Welcome back to the kitchen farm friends. I spend a lot of time in here, so I hope you guys are enjoying joining me in the, in the kitchen. Um, I know it's a little bit different, but I think it's important to show not only what we do outside on the farm and growing the food, but also what we do inside to process and preserve, as well as other things that we do, um, you know, to save money, to better our health. And that's what this is today. It's a health bettering item. Now I'm gonna announce here right now, if my hair looks kind of gross or looks a little weird, it's looking a little stringy today, I am trying to stop using shampoo. I wash my hair like every day and I know that's not good for it. So I already have really thin hair and uh, when it's not washed, it's looking a little weird, so why you can like see through it <laughs> um so yeah trying to get out of the habit of washing my hair every day going to not using shampoo uh, using a homemade product and like an apple cider vinegar rinse so if any of you have done that ladies you know it's a transition and that's why we're wearing a hat a lot lately but money saving and health saving so one of the big things i've been focusing on personally jose is super good with money and finances i am not so much um, 
you know, for a long time, super quick, for a long time I was, you know, keeping up with the Joneses, really felt that I had to have all these things and look a certain way in order to, you know, be successful. And that's just because I was buying into that, like consumerism. Now the last few years, the last three, four years since Jose and I started this journey together, we've really focused on reducing debt and our mindset has changed from consumerism to production. But, you know, I still had credit cards and I fell back into that credit card trap and now I am digging myself back out of it, to be perfectly honest. And so that's a big focus for me. So if you're hearing more money saving and budget tips on the channel, that's why, because I think it's important that we all talk about finances. Financial health is really important. And, you know, there's a lot, even in the homesteading and farming world that is like, consumerism and buy this $250 linen dress to traipse around your farm and purchase the harvest rate dehydrator and all these things. And yeah, those are great things, but those are, you know, big ticket items that not everybody can afford. And, you know, for me, a big focus of farming and homesteading is to spend less. So, you know, a $2,000 dehydrator or freeze dryer is not really, doesn't really like factor into that. I get that it's food preserving and it's another method and I'm not knocking it all. I'm just saying, I don't think that that's something that financially makes sense or even is doable for a large amount of us that are, you know, living the homestead life or farming. It's just not feasible. So I'm trying to be a bit more realistic here. I'm going to share what we're doing today. I'm sharing making my own deodorant. I've used natural deodorant for several years. I will be totally honest, lots of them don't work. You totally stink still and nobody wants that, especially if you're like going into town or going out with your significant other, you wanna smell good, right? Now, one thing I have been doing lately, I make our own soap for us. Um, there's a charcoal men's body soap that I've been making. All of this will be available on the website soon. I just need to take pictures of it. But that charcoal men's body soap I've been using specifically for my underarms to detoxify and clear out the pores. And I've actually noticed over the several days that I've been doing that, I there's you know a change in the amount that I smell. So that's really interesting. I'll keep you guys posted on that. But I need to make some deodorant because I'm out of the all natural deodorant that I used to purchase that kind of started to stop working and I found this on Doug and Stacy's channel so this is not my recipe I'm just gonna share with you guys me putting it together we're using arrowroot powder organic arrowroot powder organic cold pressed coconut oil oh my baking soda is leaking baking soda um fun fact you know how baking soda will advertise that it's aluminum free all baking soda is aluminum free that's just a marketing ploy so just so you know, you can Google it if you don't trust me. Um, and then bentonite clay. Now I had trouble finding an organic one, but this says it's 100% pure sodium bentonite clay mined in the US of A. So I did get this one. And then I have a tiny bit, teeny tiny bit of um, certified organic lemongrass essential oil. And this is rejuvenating eucalyptus, which I use for soap. Don't know if I'm gonna put the eucalyptus in there, we'll see. All right, so you wanna use a wooden spoon. I have these little tiny coconut bowl spoons and I swore that I moved them here to Tennessee and I can't find them. So we're gonna go with this big spoon, but basically it's one part clay, three parts of each of these baking soda and arrowroot powder. You can omit baking soda if you want to, just use more arrowroot and clay. So it's one, three, four parts coconut oil. So I'm gonna do the best I can with this spoon. And the reason you wanna use a wooden spoon is the bentonite clay will react with the metals. So we'll do one like that. There's one. One, two. All right, I'm gonna tell you, 
I mixed this off camera. It was kind of a disaster. It was really messy. This is what I have now. Um, looks pretty paste for me to me, which is what it's supposed to look like. So I'm just gonna put my little handy dandy lid on there, toss this in the bathroom. Um, I'll let you guys know how it works. But yeah, uh, two things. Super messy to mix up in such a small container. I don't know how Stacy did it on their channel when they did it, but I will not mix it in this container next time. I'll put it in a larger bowl and mix it. And then I also need, I think I really should look for like a smaller wooden spoon to use to measure things out and mix with. I think that would help, but I got it done. I didn't put, I decided not to put any essential oils in. I'm gonna go ahead and use it without any um, scent or essential oils and see how I like it and then go from there. But yeah, I'll let you guys know how it works. This is a really fun little container that I got when we were on vacation in California one time. It had, it was from Creation Organic, which is like a juice company and they have like snacks and stuff. I think this had a dessert in it, but love this container. I brought it back from vacation and I've had it for several years. So save your glass containers. They, you know, they can come in handy for making deodorant. You can probably hear Jose in the distance, chainsawing it up over there still. Oh, hi, Guinea. Guinea goose. Oh, they keep, the guinea, somebody keeps knocking over the baby's water. I've been coming out here and specifically giving mama and baby some food and refilling the water. Sorry, sweetie. Because if I just put food in here, everybody else eats it. Like look at these little savages here. And the guineas especially, they love to eat out of this feeder. So I figured I'll just take the time each day to come and feed mama and baby specifically. And then that way I make sure that they're getting enough food. Mama, I'm not worried about so much, but baby for sure. So Jose's running the chainsaw in the background, but hopefully I can get this real quick. One thing I do a lot to save funds from having to buy things at the grocery store is harvest our own herbs for tea. This one here is goldenrod. You're gonna be seeing this all over right now. You wanna get to it while you can, cause it has its, you know, it has a season. Goldenrod is wonderful. I'll put some benefits up on the screen, but you can see the bright yellow scattered throughout. So I've just been harvesting it whenever I come across and I leave some for the bees because I want to be responsible harvesting here. Um, but yeah, I harvest all kinds of wild um, edibles and herbs whenever possible that we can use for tea because we really enjoy tea and we also use it to flavor kombucha. So we'll stop underneath the shade of this pretty tulip tree right here. I can show you the golden rod. So I just take little handfuls, little bunches, and I do put them in the dehydrator. You can also just hang them upside down inside. They do um, fall apart quite a bit when you dehydrate them. So just be aware, you might wanna put something underneath it to catch the bits that fall. 